Pavita Diakaran was gunned down after she dropped off her child at school on a random August morning. She must have been looking into someone and compromised their source of income and by so doing placed a target on her back. She was a senior government financial official. Papita was very, very intelligent. We realized that when she was very little. With her, everything had to be to the point, to the point. It was more of a surprise for everyone because like everything was normal the days leading up to it. I thought it was probably just like a robbery or a hijack or something. Just looking at the car itself was too traumatic for me. We would have access to 60,000 emails and the contents of Babita's cell phone. Make sure that her death will not be in vain and that she won't be silenced. A snapshot there of News 24's documentary around Babita Diokran's assassination. It exposed the gaps that exist in the protection of whistleblowers in our country, among many, many other gaps that were also identified. The Gauteng Health Department official was gunned down outside her home. It was August of 2021. She had flagged dodgy payments with millions of rand at Tembisa Hospital just uh, months, in fact, weeks before her murder. And now this documentary entitled Silenced, Why Babita Diokaran Was Murdered, tells the story of her bravery in lifting the lid on corruption. For more on this, we're joined this morning by News 24's investigative journalist, Jeff Wicks. Jeff, you've obviously been at the forefront of pursuing this story and in your coverage that has spanned many, many months, one of the ways you describe Babita Diokran is that she was an island in a sea of corruption. Mm. Absolutely. I mean, she articulated that herself in conversations with her friends and colleagues before her murder. And, you know, the fact that she blew the whistle on nearly 850 million rands worth of dubious payments from Timbisa Hospital and then was murdered shortly thereafter mm -hmm. is a testament to her sacrifice. It was three weeks, right? Three weeks from when she reported that flood of suspicious payments at Timbisa Hospital and her murder. Absolutely. Just three weeks and the most damning thing to come out of our investigation is that the Gauteng Health Department sat on their hands and did nothing. Her report into those payments and those transactions from Timbisa Hospital was never formally escalated and it was effectively buried. What we're looking at here is a cover-up and we've exposed that cover-up. But what this documentary is, is more about the person that Babita Diokran was. Um, you and I were at the scene of her murder. It was last August um, on the anniversary of her assassination and it's chilling to be there, right? Um, you, you described to me um, the turn she took from up the road where she picked up her helper as she, she had just dropped her daughter off at school, drove down the street and that's where she was assassinated. Yeah, it was an ordered killing. She was shot 12 times. Police recovered brass from three different firearms at the scene. So her killing had a, a very intended purpose yeah. and they made sure that she was eliminated. And obviously the biggest tragedy, or one of the largest tragedies in this story, is the fact that the person who ordered the hit is still in the wind. Mm. It's been more than 600 days since an arrest was made in her murder case. And that is the, uh, another parlous failure of our police mm. force. So, so let's take it back to, um, you know, what happened after her murder? In terms of the health department's response, the police's response, and how the SIU then got involved. So uh, when Babita reported her concerns at Timbisa Hospital, she reported them to her boss, the CFO at the time, who's now suspended. Yeah. That CFO never formally escalated her report. She never conducted an investigation, actually lied to Babita Diokran, saying that she would. Instead, there was a random compliance audit, and they looked at a mere sample of thousands of transactions that Diokran had flagged, and they arrived at the same conclusion. Yet nothing was actioned. N no staff were disciplined, and the money kept flowing. And that's what our investigation has proven that 
network of companies extracted more than a billion rand from that hospital. Some of them are fake. They're shell corporations that exist only on paper. And only after we pushed this into the public domain did that prompt some sort of action and basically formed the basis for the involvement of the SIU. So, so six arrests have been made. Who's in custody now? So we've got six men, the alleged hitmen, who are, they remain behind bars and they will go to trial in July. Uh -huh. And their trial um, will, it will stretch for, I think it's been set down for just over a week. But, you know, these are low level individuals, yeah. as we often yeah. see with high profile assassinations in this country. Where's the paymaster? That's the question that we're asking. Yeah, they may have fired the gun, but who ordered that action? Um, you know, Jeff, it, it's such a chilling story, and I, I just wonder how, how much we would know as we're sitting here at this roundtable together had it not been for your doggedness and News 24's commitment to covering this story. Well, it, it's a pivotally important issue. You know, whistleblowers are abandoned in the South African context, and it, the same is true for Babita. She, she told her boss several days before her murder that her life might be in danger. That's articulating a concern for her safety. And nothing was done and she died alone. It's, it's, it would be derelict of us not to pursue the story to the end. Well, it would be derelict of those in the official positions, in uh, the police, for example, to not pursue the story. Well, one would think, but they've not covered themselves in glory so far. I mean, it, it, the trigger men, or the alleged trigger men, were arrested three days after the killing, and since then, there's been absolutely nothing. That case has gone cold, and any semblance of justice for the Diokran family is slowly slipping away with each day that nothing happens. You've, you've sort of spent quite a bit of time with the Diokran family, with her daughter, with um, her brothers and sisters. I remember when we were at their home last year on the anniversary of her assassination, how heartbroken that family still is. I mean, we were in Babita Diokaran's home on mm. that anniversary, and it was as she had left it, mm. right? Mm. How are they doing? You know, it's um, a horrible memory that they're forced to confront daily. Yeah. And, you know, I think if our work has done anything, it might have given them an understanding but it hasn't given them closure. The only way they will get closure is when there's justice, and that's arrests and convictions. Mm. And pushing into the light the people who eliminate public officials for corrupt ends. What's the situation now at Timbisa Hospital in terms of the money flows? So there's new management at, at Timbisa Hospital, um, which seems to have stemmed the tide, so to say. But News 24 will reveal in due course that one company linked to a 250 million rand extraction syndicate was paid by the Gauteng Health Department as, as recently as January. So the money keeps flowing, and that in itself is problematic. Uh, Jeff, uh, you're one of um, the investigative journalists covering the story um, what has it been like for you, just in terms of how your life has changed um, and perhaps also the danger that you face in, in uncovering the kind of rot that you've dealt with? I'm lucky enough to have a team um, working with me on this um, and it's been a long project, definitely the most challenging of, of, of my career. And we would be naive to assume that we don't assume some of the danger. And, you know, someone has already been killed for knowing too much. Yeah. So we've taken that on. But in our view, it's, it's too important a story to just abandon. So the uh, documentary was released yesterday at cinemas. Um, today it's live on the News24 website. Um, you mentioned just a snapshot of what's contained, and we'll play that trailer, a snapshot of that trailer again as we end of our interview. But why should our viewers go and watch it? Well, you know, everyone, I think, at this point understands the role of whistleblowers in South African society. Everyone understands the importance, but no one understands what they go through. Mm. And, you know, someone like Martha Ngoi from Prasa, who's um, testified at the State Capture Commission, who put her hand up and made herself a target, has been abandoned mm. by the so-called post-state capture era. So the one issue is the plight of whistleblowers. And then our stories have uncovered the corruption and the money flows, but this is a tribute to Babita Diokran and a focus on the person that she was yeah. um, because that is often lost in this morass of graft and theft. That she was a person, that she was a mother, that she was a sister, a daughter, absolutely. Jeff Wicks, let me thank you for your time and uh, thank you for the incredible work that you've been doing on the story around Babita Diokran. The importance of whistleblowers, where would we be without these brave men and women that literally put their lives 
their incomes and Babita Diokran paying the ultimate price there, lifting the lid on corruption at Timbisa Hospital.